Now that GT7 1.52 is of course here, it's time as always to give my first impressions, an overview and review of the update as a whole, before of course we dive into the individual vehicles and stuff in the coming days on the channel. So we will be talking about the cars, of course, no circuit this time around. There are, I will say in favour of the update, a couple of extra things which are more than you would expect. So for example, instead of the usual three career mode events, there are more like six, it's better than nothing, I guess. Still not exactly a huge amount, but it's double technically. And speaking of double, twice the amount of engine swaps as well. There's 10 instead of the usual five. Now, tomorrow I will dive more so into the actual engine swaps and show them on screen as I always like to do. But one of the interesting things in this one again is that as we've seen a couple of times more recently, I'm pretty sure it usually happens to JDM cars more than anything. This does mark another occasion where we have a car added and in said update, also have an engine swap as well, which is the Toyota Hiace DX, which you can put the Subaru BRZ drift engine into, which means that in combination with the weight loss package, you're looking at a 1300 kilo van with 1200 horsepower, which is a hell of a combination to have. I mean, you're talking like Koenigsegg territory, but in a panel van, which is pretty awesome. Tons of cool liveries have already come out for it. I will say, as you'll see in the video, some of the visual mods are pretty cool for it as well. Stuff like uh, mirror delete, smoothing off the bodywork, even facelifting it. The body kit itself, the wide arch kit, doesn't really do that much. It barely extends the arches, but still, it's cool. One thing I will say in favour of the High Ace is that not only is it cheap, you can't quite match how cheap the ambulance was, because that was free, but at least this one is a faster car than the ambulance. The biggest advantage of the ambulance, the high medic, was that it has four wheel drive. This one, interestingly, does not. It's a rear wheel drive. So a bit more of a, a drift ready platform, if you will. In standard form, obviously the point level isn't that high, barely over 200, that kind of region but fully built, like I said, it is a bit of a monster. To move on from the meme car to the car which many people were looking forward to, of course, the Evo 8. What's the verdict? Well, I'm very happy to say the Evo is fantastic. In terms of just pure handling, I would say it's easily the best of the three cars. It is a weapon on the track, and this one fully built, like with the Evo 9, it's not as powerful, in fact, no way near as powerful as it should be, fully built in the game, or at least what Gran Turismo 7 would call fully built, is 540 horsepower which for any Evo aficionado, you'll have a good chuckle about that one, given that they literally sold a 400 horsepower version from the factory anyway, let alone one which is only capable of 540. I suspect we'll probably get a motor swap, as we did with the Evo 9, which was, what, like 780, 790 horses? I think something like that. That's still nowhere near what an Evo can be producing. It is quick, yes, it's powerful, but it's not as powerful as you'd expect. The weight is good, it's actually similar to the HKS CT230R kind of territory, about 1,090 kilos, fully stripped out. The body kit is very interesting because this one, as a total contrast to the uh, High Ace, is a full-on body kit. It adds loads of parts, intakes all over the place, it totally changes the front bumper in particular in terms of how it looks. A couple of interesting things about two cars to move on from the Evo to the GTR though, and like I said, I will of course be getting more in-depth on each of the three cars in their own reviews, so stick around over the next few days if you want to hear more about them. But to get back to the GTR and also here with the Evo, there's an interesting couple of upgrades that they've done with these in terms of drag wings. They have those kind of very low-slung ducktail spoilers sticking out the back, which is a curious choice. I mean, sure, you can make them into drag cars, but it seems to be a bit more of a recurring theme that we're seeing drag wings added more and more recently. We've got the GTR and the Evo this time around. We have the Chevy Chevelle in another update as well to have the drag wing, so that's a curious choice. One of the most interesting choices, again, as you'll see in the video, possibly you've already seen it, was the conversion, almost, of the front end of the R35 to almost like a smoothed off look. And in conjunction with the rear wing, it almost looks like a speed record kind of car, which, it's pretty cool, I guess. It doesn't have a motor swap yet. I haven't bothered fully building mine because I'm expecting it to have like a Chiron motor swap probably at some point or something like that. So there's not really much point in fully building the standard engine. All I've done to mine is fitted that rather interesting Tommy Kyra esque rear wing and stripped out the weight. You can do the extreme level weight, stage five or whatever, and that drops it down to like 1200 kilos, which is pretty damn good for an L35. Incidentally, all three cars barely cost you like 300 grand to buy the Evos of about 80, the GTR is 200, and then of course the van is about 25, 26. So it's a pretty cheap update in terms of affordability. In terms of the new events, they are mostly focused around the new cars. There's a new GTR event, which of course you'll see me using this one in. In fact, all of the races that you can see me driving on here are new ones. There are three Evo events as well, 
probably the most interesting of which is actually a new rally event, which is pretty cool to see a rally event that isn't always rally cars for a change. And funnily enough, if you are a follower of my special project series, you finally got a great use for all of those Mitsubishi Evo rally cars I've been doing, which is awesome. Even in the most recent pack, I did an Evo 3 rally car. So having I've done Evo 3, Evo 4, Evo 5, Evo 6, I think I did as well. So all kinds of rally cars which you can now use, which is very cool. And ultimately beyond that, we've got some new scapes, as I said, new motor swaps, including, as I said, the high ace. I'll get more into the swaps tomorrow, though. There's a, a decent mix. You've got some JDM. One of the curious things about the motor swaps is that there are a couple of cars included which already had other motor swap options, like the Mitsubishi GTO and the Silvia S15 Touring car. So that's a curious choice. The new scapes, incidentally, are, of course, set in Chicago. A few of them do look kind of familiar, though, so I think it might be one of those where they've collated a few of them together and maybe added one or two in there. So it's nothing too special. One of them you can see in the thumbnail of the video anyway. So yeah, I mean, this is one of those updates where despite having some physics changes, there's a, a new color for the Toyota GR10 hybrid, and you know, some more chatter that car designers can get into if you want to listen to that. And there is an Audi collection book, which is pretty easy to get, as well as, of course, the new career mode events, as I said as well. So ultimately, it's a little bit more than what we were expecting in terms of stuff to do, but nothing that's necessarily going to reinvent the wheel in terms of bringing you back if you were already bored of the game. The cars are fun, I would say. The GTR, to briefly reference that one again, is probably the only one of the three which I was actively disinterested in and disappointed by, because even with weight loss, I'm actually not impressed at all about how the R35 handles, which is kind of shocking because the R35 is one of the cars that I praise the most, and in real life I do love them. Somehow, even with that extreme weight loss, it still feels really heavy through corners. And of course, I haven't done much else to it, but this is a GTR we're talking about, so you would kind of expect it to already be good straight out of the box. That's kind of what it's known for. So. I wasn't really impressed. The brakes weren't that great. The turn-in is actually quite bad, even with the reduced weight. So yeah, I'm not impressed at all, to be honest, about the R35. Sure, it will have its fans being like the final one. Ooh, ah. But yeah, the other two are definitely far more interesting to me. The high ace for the memes turns out it's pretty quick as well. And of course, the Evo being the all-round, I would say, best one of the three in terms of just being an actual competition spec car. And of course, you will most likely see some variation, perhaps more than one, of the Evo 8 in future special projects packs. But that's it for my thoughts on GT7 1.52. Like I said, stick around tomorrow for the motor swaps, and of course a members video in that section as well on the channel tomorrow. And then in the three days to follow that, I will of course dive into my individual thoughts on the cars. But I'll see you then with more, and for now, thanks for watching.